we had plenty of cuts of this, but I'm going to kind of, <clears throat> I'm going to show you some of this, and I'm going to show you <clears throat> how we blocked it. This, this was our number one running play, was our, was our duo scheme. And, uh, and we can do it same side, we can do it opposite side, everything else. And, and uh, I've talked on this before, so I'm, I'm going to show you about 10 clips, whatever, and we'll move on to the passing game. The reason we like this play is we should get two double teams across the line right here. Now, it doesn't happen to this particular front right here, which is an odd front, but we're going to get a double team right here for sure. We're going to get it because of blitz. We don't get a double team with the tight end and tackle, but most of the time it'll be a five technique, and we do get a double team here, and we're trying to the back right there, okay? This is a different scenario in the fact that we're in a four-minute situation right here, okay? Uh, we, we would usually have a run tag on this, and the quarterback is responsible for the seventh defender. So right here, we're going to get a man-man hit. We're going to get a double team here. Unless it's blitz, okay, we're going to get a double team here. So we're going to get movement at two points, is the reason we love this play right here. Now, the guy blitzed, we had to come off everything else. Quarterback is responsible for this guy right here, okay? Hey, that guy will come coming down here and take the running back. he keep it. Now, again, uh, in other sets and other formations, the quarterback would read this guy, and we would have a run tag to take care of that guy. Again, a different formation right there, but the, but the beauty of it, this is a little different stunt right there. But, hey, we know we're going to get double team here. This right tackle right here should get more him with the guy slanted out. So we're going to get a double team here, all right? And, again, we can block these six. The quarterback is responsible for the seventh one right here. We can do it. We can do it by a run tag, or we can do it by him running the football. Again, we're going to get movement here, right? They slanted into it. Hey, and look, they squeezed it off and did a good job. And Sadiq did enough job to get him around the corner right there. Okay, but we're going to get double teamed. We're going to get pushed off the football. Again, this tackle needs to be a little slower right here and try to get a piece of him and climb to the linebacker. The quarterback will take care of this one. All right, Coach Insminger, a uh, question came through. So when you say run tag, that means like your RPOs, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And so the, the question is, you know, what, what like percentage are you calling the design play action or are they RPOs? Um, do you have a run tag for every run play? Um, you know, maybe talk about the difference between the play action and the RPO. We, we do uh... – and I'll say, I'm, I'm looking at the board right now. We, we have three different schemes in the fact that, hey, one's a, one's a run tag, and usually on every, um, I won't say every, half our run is always have a run tag on it, take care of the seventh defender. Some of, some of our runs is a triple option, meaning, okay, hey, the, the end crashed down, the quarterback kept the football, but we have, we have a, a bubble going on, or we have another route going on down here. But uh, unless it's a four-minute deal, uh, on, on probably half our running plays, we'll always have a run tag on it. Coach, another, another question coming in uh, for the running back. Uh, what's, his, what's his aiming point, and then what's he, what's he looking at for his cut? In this duo, and we'll take it right here. In this duo, 
right? If we're running same side, which you're doing right here, okay? Then his point of aim is, is inside leg of the guard right here. And he's reading the middle backer, okay? If we put him on the opposite side. If we put him on the opposite side right there, knowing we're gonna get flow from backer, then his point of aim is crack of the center right there, and he's reading the backside backer. And you'll see all those scenarios in this. So we'll get a great double team right here. If they stayed in a base, we'd get a great double team right here. They slanted, he climbs to the backer right there. Clyde is taking a step over. We're bringing the ball to him right there. He's in the, the he's really right behind the guard, the crack of the guard right there, and he's reading the play side backer. All right, here we go, okay? They would go here. Here's the point. Hey, we are double teaming to here. He has this gap. He has this gap. These two receivers right here are responsible for number one and the nearest threat. It might be him. It might be him. All right? So it's the same side. So quarterback brings it to him. He ends up right behind the guard, crack of the guard right there. He's reading this backer right here. He slow to fast through the backer jumps here. He takes it backside. Again, it's the same side. He ends up right behind the guard. He's reading play side backer. Backer shuffles this way. He knows he's going back. Our guard right here does a really good job. He shuffles down to get the double team. The guy slants. He works back out to help the tight end. Ought to help him more. Ought to help him more. And then climbs to the backer. These two receivers are responsible for the point and whoever's the nearest threat, whether it's a safety or a corner. And this was kind of kind of a messed up deal, but 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 we're we're attacking it right and everything else. It's just a lot of movement, and because of this play, we 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 do get a lot of movement, okay. And because of the movement, then we have to decide, hey, hey, where do we we need to go to our zone concept. We need to go to our inside zone or outside zone uh, when we're starting to get a lot of movement right here, okay. So hey, these two, I fixed the double team here to here. He's working here. He's working there. These two are working inside. He slants. He should climb to here. These two are responsible for the two threats outside. This guy basically ran his, himself out of it. Again, we ought to get a double team here. We ought to get a double team here, and we'll single here. These two take care of the a perimeter. It's the same size, so he's reading here. Let me ask with you, he should have kept this thing right here. But you can't tell great running backs where to run. You can give them some direction. Now this is a this is a a defense we hadn't seen, and all of a sudden, so hey, we had to make some adjustments on the sideline and everything else. So hey, if we're running the same side right here out of this particular set, okay, hey, I've got this gap, I've got this gap, I've got this gap, I got this gap, hey, and let it unfold. Somebody's coming to your gap. There it is. There's my gap. Delu steps down right here. I think he's a little heavy on it. But hey, he has this gap. 
Now, Austin, right here, these two have these two gaps. So, hey, he got to get his eyes back inside, which he does, and he gets there. We're reading it, and Clyde does a great job of selling it downhill, making this guy step up so our tackle can get on it and then bounce it. Again, this is a lot of movement, and I'll try to get you to a better one, okay? Hey, uh, basically in the third quarter, they got out of that defense and went to a base defense. So we got a chance now, again, what we talked about. Let's get movement here, and we needed to against these guys. Double team here, double team here. Get movement, same side, bring it to him. He's right behind the guard. He's reading play side backer, play side backer, and Clyde does a great job of getting in the hole right there. This guy squats in the hole, and he bounces it. Yeah, this, this, this is what you're looking for right here, okay? Hey, and we're going fast here. You can see the official trying to get out. This is one of those plays that I think you can go as fast as you want because it's basically a gap play. It's a power no pull. Right? I'm going to step down to my gap and we're going to double team. We get great movement here. We get a great double team here. I mean, we, we got them four yards off the ball right there. Great job by our tight end. We're reading play side backer. He steps up in the hole. Clyde does a great job of getting his cleats to the line of scrimmage and then make the cut. Same thing, really good double team here. Really good pad level, really good mess, really good double team right there. Now also step down. The double team here didn't slide away, but he felt no pressure. So he helped work back outside and get the double team here. He helped the tight end right there. And really, I, I thought we were a little too fast to the hole, but you can see where this hole should be right here. Again, you can see the defense. This is a play that you can go fast on because, hey, hey, it's gap, 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 gap. So, hey, I got those two. We should be doubling here. We should be doubling there right there. These two take care of the perimeter right there. They're still, still looking for the call, what to line up in. Let's go. Nice movement on the double team right here. Boom. He slants in. So, Tori, our, our tight end right here. Now he climbs right there. Take care of the perimeter. Nice double team right here. Nice double team right here. We're going to get movement there. Nice job by the tight end. These two are responsible for those two. All right, Russ, take us to uh, passing game. Um, I, I was going to show you some RPOs. We kind of showed that in the clinic in the spring. Uh, so I'm going to 